right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail, and a big almost happy new year to all you guys around the world. So for today, I'm going to go over an update to a video I covered on Christmas Day, which was titled, Man Shares 27 Lessons That He's Learned Over 50 Years That Fully Confirm What I As Well As The RP Say. And guys, that guy's story was a long one on Christmas Day, went through his whole life. He's in his 60s, and all the lessons he's learned along the way that back up, like I said, things that I talk about as well as other guys in the community, etc. And as you all recall that watched it, this guy was quite the Chad when he was younger. Did a lot of things I disagree with. He was go, hooking up with married women and cheating and all that stuff like that. But it seems like over time he's learned his lesson, got married, and for 20 years he was in a pretty damn unhappy marriage. It seemed like karma to me. And, but regardless, he's learned a lot of lessons and now he's in the next stage where the kids are out of the house and his wife, who's neglected him and treated like crap, is suddenly really putting on the uh, kiss of his butt knowing darn well that he could walk away at any minute. But anyhow, he is now updating. He's responding to a lot of questions that people had, things that I mentioned, things that were left out and all that. And I thought it'd be a good one because uh, I was entertaining his video. And it's it, I like to hear... I like hearing from everybody all over the world, but I especially like to hear from guys that have been around the block that are 60s, 70s, or, or senior guys, if you will, that really have lived it and understand what I talk about. It backs up. So that way, a lot of the younger guys who watch me, they're sometimes might be thinking, oh, those old guys don't know what they're talking about. Well, that doesn't apply to me. Bullshit. The older guys know exactly what they're talking about. And at the end of the day, human nature doesn't change. It doesn't change over time. We are pretty much no different what motivates us, what we respond to, how we act, than we did 2,000 years ago. So, continues on in his story, he says, uh, Hello again, SSM. I appreciate you running my story. I would never have considered sharing it without listening to your videos, and you are providing an incredible service to men everywhere. Bro, thank you. I appreciate that, and uh, this is what I do. I love what I do. Uh, there are some things I'd like to elaborate on that were not included in the first story because I didn't think some were necessary and didn't want my story to be too long. Well, bro, your story, I think, was like 48 minutes long, so it was long, but no problem. I deserved every smack along the way. I should have been more clear on how my upbringing affected me in the later years. Like I said, my siblings and I did not have a childhood. We had survival training. I did a lot of things I'm not proud of just to eat every day, and this creates somewhat of a socio sociopath. Yeah, it's amazing what people will compromise to survive and then what that does to mold you and how you are in adulthood. But still, it doesn't excuse people's, let's just say, bad actions. Bad, good, bad, subjective, depending on who you're talking to, but negative. That's a better way to describe it. I never felt any guilt about anything and did not have a conscience back then. Life was all about me even after the survival training was over. A word about Chuck and the PORN collection. He, he's going over people he talked about in the story. So those of you guys that saw his video will know who he's talking about. Chuck was a loser and the only way he, he could have friends was to offer the, the, the PORNO at his place. He was the guy when he was a kid, I guess a teen, who went and saw PORN over at his house. Something like that. By the way, Chuck invented a 16-year-old Christian kid over one night who reported this to his parents, who then reported it to the police. Chuck's P-O-R-N palace had to shut down. Not surprised. The community in which I lived in had less than 1,000 people, and there really wasn't a lot to do for teenagers, so driving around the country roads drinking beer and listening to very loud music was the only option after Chuck got shut down. That was a lot, kind of like my childhood, because I was in the middle of nowhere during the teenage years, too. At least I worked. So later while in the military, I didn't even give a moment's thought about how my behavior affected other people because it was all about me and getting what I wanted. Yes, smack. I simply didn't know any better. Yeah, we can go back and forth about whether people didn't know any better and things like that, but I think there is universal right and wrong. And, you know, we can go a lot of philosophers and other big shots and, and psychologists can go on on debates things about people's background, how they were raised, their experience, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, even certain areas that I wasn't, had, didn't have things told to me when I was a kid, deep down I knew when I was doing something wrong. I never thought very highly of myself and honestly considered myself a loser. But Debbie, the hottie from the gym, was a milestone in my life. I thought she was clearly out of my league. So after her and I, after her, 
I was of the opinion that I was better to ask forgiveness than permission. My first experience with Debbie set the bar high and I wasn't willing to shoot lower. So if I came onto a 9 or 10, what did I have to lose? What was the worst that could happen? I wasn't really confident, but wasn't afraid either and, and lost, and most men would not approach them. I discovered the secret to getting women was to give them attention and then validation. I found that all you had to do was tell them what they wanted to hear, whether it was true or not, and he says, yes, smack. Well, that, there's a lot of truth to that, and women have learned to do the same thing with men who they're after. Uh, my uh, socio mind prohibited me from feeling any remorse for the women or the boyfriends or husbands. Well, I less feel I less feel bad about the gals, but I feel bad about the guys of the women that you cheated with because, you know, these poor bastards didn't deserve that. But like I said, karma back came back to bite you as it always does, guys. I was getting what I wanted. Since all I knew about SCX was what I learned from Chuck's porno palace, I learned how to please a gal and, and, and blow her mind. So telling her everything she wanted to hear and giving her toe-curling, spine-tingling SCX delivered everything to me that I wanted. Again, it was all about me. Yes, smack. I suppose this qualifies me as a chab, but I never hit a woman or stole from her. I did cheat and lie, though, but again, to me, the end justifies the means. I was very immature, and that teeny tiny little town taught me nothing about the real world, nor did anyone teach me how to have a friendship. Well, I, I, I'm glad you recognize this now in your 60s, you know. I'm, I'm guessing you probably recognize this without me telling you that and smacking the bejesus out of you in the other video, but still, I'm glad you at least recognize this now. Uh, people, were the, people were only an opportunity to give me something that I wanted. This may sound hypocritical, but I, just, I felt justified in this because I still had the daily survival mindset I learned as a kid. Well, again, people to survive do a lot of things either they don't want to do, they compromise a lot of things, or simply they just it, it, they block anything out about remorse or right and wrong. But as an adult, you weren't surviving anymore. I was not afraid to approach the hottest woman and to be honest, did not get shot down as often as I expected. That said, I just used them for my own purposes. Looking back, I'm wondering how, how I was so successful. I'm not tall. I consider myself to be average looks. My wife tells me that I underestimate my looks, but she kind of has to say that, I think. Well, she has to kind of say that now because uh, otherwise she knows darn well with the kids out of the house, you could leave her. I think that the, the pretty women responded to you because you had confidence. You approached them and didn't give a shit. You know, and that goes a long way. And plus, a lot of times beautiful women aren't approached because guys naturally and and it is justified in many ways, assume they're going to bite their head off, be, be a bitch to them, stuff like that, or they're just too chicken shit to do it. Who knows? Sharon, another one of his chicks, really sparked change for my life for the first time I had an intellectual as well as a physical relationship with a woman. She did help me gain a better understanding of the real world and convinced me to go to church steadily eroded my socio-personality. Also in the military, I had a free place to live. I got to eat three times a day and got paid regularly. This was seriously a good life. If you all recall, when he was a kid, like his dad, it, it, there was pretty much no food. His dad was a piece of garbage. I, I believe he was a drunk, would re regularly beat the kids up, broke his arm, that type of thing. The mother just turned a blind eye, was in her romance novels, I think. It was a terrible childhood, and I feel bad for him. But what you do as an adult, I don't feel so bad about regardless. You got to move past your childhood shit, guys. The selfishness and the I don't give an F edge it wore off slowly, and I slowly became more mature. For the first time, I felt remorse for all the people in my life that I had used for my own purposes. There was a kid in grade school I used to bully unmercifully because if I was, if I was getting bullied, it wasn't okay for me to bully someone else. I thought, boy, this I thought, boy, this one hit me hard. I tried to find the guy online to apologize to him, but found that he has died from a drug overdose. I'm sure I had something to do with that. You never know. People that get bullied in, in childhood either go, either go one of two ways. Either they then be the one of three ways. They they either become the monster that used to bully them, or they learn to toughen up and defend themselves, and they become like a guard dog. They become tough, they lift weights, they join martial arts, learn to fight, and they become tough, but they don't become a-holes. Or they become basically George McFly in the, the beginning of Back to the Future, just worn down and pushed around and all that. And in this case, this guy ended his OD on drugs, he probably took drugs to deal with the pain. Yeah, it's a shame. 
So by the, by the time Sophie came along, this is his now wife, I was committed to doing the right and moral thing. That is why I married her, and the long-standing tradition of marrying a gal because you knocked her up wasn't so much why I did it. The time had come for me to face my responsibilities head on. So because you were feeling bad for all the shit you did when you were younger, which you should have been, you, I guess, let Sophie get a lot, away with a lot of bullshit because you felt like you, this was your atonement. And the problem is you went too far on this end where you were letting her get away with bullshit, and she treated you like shit for 20 years. Now, to me, that's the karma, but regardless... I would absolutely encourage men to not date single MOMs. <laughs> Gee, I think I've been saying that for close to four years now. Occasionally you'll find a good one, but the odds are so, so not in your favor, just don't even consider it. I know some good single MOMs. My cousin's a good single MOM, although her boys are now in college, so it's a different dynamic. But, you know, it's rare. I mean, they, they are there, and they're good moms, and they're good people. But then the, even the best ones that aren't going to seek guys out to take advantage of them, their resources and everything, still, those guys are going to come first. And and you can't blame her, but as a single guy that doesn't want to deal with that, then you have to be aware of that, you know, compared to the single MOMs that outright are looking for guys to take advantage of, treat you like crap, let the kids disrespect you, all that. So I, if you are a relationship guy and you do want a family one day, I recommend just finding a gal that does not have children. But be careful, because some of these gals don't tell you they have kids until you're roped in. Uh, I adore my four children, and having them makes my life worthwhile. I swore an oath that my kids would never go through anything I went through as a kid. That's good. Good for you. I'll be straight with you when my parents... I'll be straight with you. When my parents died, I went to the funeral out of obligation and not even and did not even one day of my life have I missed them. I wouldn't have gone the, until, especially your dad, the way he treated you. Oh, hell no. Maybe your mom, you know, as, as an obligation or you're forgiving her, but your dad, no fucking way. Good riddance, assholes. My relationship with my daughter is pretty good, though I will admit that the 12 years I was in sales, working 12 to 14 hours a day and making a lot of money was... I was not the nicest person. I regret some of the things I said to my kids. <clears throat> no parent is perfect. Parents make mistakes. Except when you're a kid, you expect your parents to know everything and all that, and that's just not realistic. We, we all, everybody makes mistakes. Upon coming home, my wife had put a dinner plate in the microwave for me. I go tuck my kids into bed, and my wife would want to talk about what I ate, what I talk while I ate my heat up dinner. <clears throat> By that time, I was exhausted and really didn't pay much attention to what she said, and of course, this created more distance between us. The last 30 years have been a blur, and my wife and I got into lots of ruts. We were distant and really didn't like each other that much. I was thinking, uh, I was thinking, look, I'm, I'm busting my tail to provide a good life for us and paying for private school for the kids. I thought that I was justified in my behavior. On the weekends, I fix cars, things around the house, etc. So on the weekends... <clears throat> so on the weekends, I was not available to my wife either, and this further caused the distance to increase, even though she was the one uh, ba uh, breaking shit all the time. Yeah, so you were busting your tail, working 12 to 14 hour days to provide for your family, and that's great, and fixing things around the house. But you were never, it sounds like, there for them very much. Like, she, she handled everything. And if you're going to have a successful relationship, and I'm saying relationship, you got to make time for your girl. And this also means your wife. And if you don't, she's going to give bitter and resentful and bitchy and oftentimes if she has the looks go cheat so she needs to be understanding that you're busting your tail to take care of the family and understand that but also at the same time there's got to be a balance you have some time for her and even though you're tired as hell when you come home and the last thing you want to hear about is some stupid bullshit you got to listen to some of the things and, and obviously spend time with the kids but again no parent is perfect uh, her life was consumed with changing diapers, feeding the kids, loading them into the minivan for days, outings to the parks, the zoo, etc. She did all the housekeeping, cooking, laundry, cleaning. I thought we were even because I didn't have any time for myself either. Well, you were busting your tail to provide, so she certainly should be busting her tail to take care of the house and the family, things you could not do. But still, it sounds to me that there was just no communication. And again, you married her because you got her pregnant, and that is not the basis you know, but that's the old way of doing things. The big mistake I made was letting the, uh, this distance get out of hand. She was constantly bitching, complaining, nagging, and blaming. And then there were the shit tests that you talk about all the time. Well, of course. 
I got so tired of the daily routine, I just walked away and said nothing when I should have just put a stop to the bullshit. I also realized that I could have managed my time better, eliminate unnecessary tasks and prioritizing my work so I could be home more often. When my son graduated from high school, I realized I missed his life from age 3 to 17. I simply wasn't there. One of the reasons I married Sophie was that he would get a better parenting that the monster got than the monster I had, but in the end, he did not get the better parenting. It's funny how some of those things worked out, but he was also your first child. By Probably by your last child, you were more acquainted with what it was like to be a dad, you know, but mistakes were made. I hope now in your 60s, you're able to talk to your son and let him know that you care. Let him know that you made mistakes and you're sorry for that. He needs to hear that, you know, and a situation like this could either harden a young boy or wear him down. You just never know. <clears throat> I've since apologized to him and told him all the things I did wrong and the regrets I have. That's good. I'm glad you did that. He was pleased to hear me say things about our relationship and our relationship is much better, but there will always be a piece of him that I'll never get. Well, at least you have some of him, you know, and you, you try, you're trying your best. Uh, Gianna taught me the value of a, of a good father to a daughter, so I've tried to be that, that guy for them. I'm very proud of my girls. Since I took the lowest paying job, I cannot took the lower paying job. I cannot afford to pay for their college, so they're working and going to school. My youngest is a rather accomplished athlete and won a, not, a national championship in her chosen sport. Well, that's cool. And frankly, it's good that your kids, your daughters, are working and paying for their school themselves because that's going to teach them personal responsibility and accountability, which all adults need to have. The problem with parents paying for all their kids' schooling is that the kids don't, oftentimes don't appreciate it, and they think they ex expect you to be an ATM machine, which you're not. Uh, as for Sophie, his wife, things are great now, and I and no doubt SSM, you are right about my wife changing because I talked about divorce. Oh, I'm 100% right about that. That said, I have to take some responsibility here too. I made some poor choices in the last 30 years, and I wish I could do it over. She has an equal part in this, too, and I think we both realize this now. Yes, she does have an equal part. It's not just because you were gone all the time working and didn't want to listen to her babble on about some stupid-ass shit when you came home from, from work. She made mistakes, too. Both you made mistakes. But she was a royal asshole to you way more than you were an asshole to her. Let's be honest here. And the reason she's on her best behavior, she knows that now the kids are adults, you can leave. And you could easily go back, back to being that 60-something-year-old Chad you were in your 20s and 30s. Uh, we live in a no-fault state, and that basically means men get effed over in divorce. Family law destroys men, especially if the woman was a stay-at-home mom. She would have gotten the house, and I would still have to pay for it. She would have gotten the kids, child support, alimony, and I would have gotten a, a one-room efficiency in the bad part of town. And people wonder why so many more, more and more men are not getting married, being aware of what could happen if things go wrong. Gee, I tell you one thing, we start to move away from the Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0 world that we're in and people start having actual values again, particularly women nowadays, and they realize what the effinist movement has taught the gals what he's about being so-called empowered, and you know what I mean by that, things could start to change, but also you need the family courts to change a more a more fair level playing field. And until that happens... More and more guys, and I'll be encouraging every step of the way to not get married with how things are nowadays. And it's unfortunate because the problem we have is a more disintegration of the nuclear family. We need a two-parent household to take care of the kids, and both parties provide what the children need. It's a mess right now. But again, you can't blame guys just saying, fuck this. Right? I mean, really. A guy I used to work with, I uh, had a stay-at-home wife. She ran up a $200,000 credit card debt and cheated on him. He had to pay all the debt, she got the house, and he had to pay the mortgage, and she got the kids. He had to pay alimony and child support and took half of his retirement. That was a wake-up call to me. And again, right there, back to what I said. Why the fuck would any guy sign up for this shit? It's a losing deal. So I figured if I lose everything, inc everything, including my kids, and why get divorced? At least staying married, I get to be with my kids every day. I lose half my retirement, which did not, which did not amount to much anyway. I was better off financially staying in the marriage and being with my kids. The event that happened two years ago was absolutely unexpected. We were still struggling financially because I don't have the drive to go back to 
back and do what I did before when I was making lots of money. You're in your 60s for heaven's sake. My wife and I have started, have started a side business that's profitable and I do plan to grow and eventually make that my primary source of income. Well, that's awesome, man. If you guys can work together and make it profitable and over time much more profitable, you're going to be much more motivated to dedicate your time and energy to your own business that you've created out of thin air than you would be for working for somebody else, guaranteed. And even if you don't make huge money but enough money to take care of yourself in your 60s and all, along with when you eventually collect Social Security, um, at least you'll feel better about it because it's yours. The, in the intimate part of our relationship is honestly better than it was 30 years ago. I won't give it up. I won't. I won't give up until she has an orgasm. Again, she knows you can walk away, so of course it's better than ever, which shows me she could have made the effort all these years. Granted, raising children and all that certainly can wear you down. Mentally, physically, emotionally, but still, she could have been much better to you back then. Probably shouldn't say this, but that the BJs are the best in my life. Yeah, I don't need to hear that. She still tries to to do tests. She tries to pull the effinist shit on occasion. She has a friend who's an extremist and an effin Nazi who sometimes gets in her head, but I calmly check her on it, and she usually stops. Sometimes she says, I can't help how I feel, and I tell her that her feelings are irrelevant, and in five minutes, that will be different. Yeah, exactly. I don't care how you fucking feel. What, what your, your feelings are irrelevant. Yes, because what you're feel, well, this is nonsense. And I tell you all the time, be careful who your girl hangs out with. Pay attention. So if you say one of her friends is this f Nazi, well, time for you to lay down the law. She no longer hangs out with her, because that's going to bring turmoil and drama into your life. But I'm glad you're checking her on this. We need to focus on the facts if we are going to get anywhere. And while she never agrees, agrees, we'll eventually focus on the facts. Keep up the good work, SSM. So there you go, guys. It was just a quick update. Some more information about his life, explaining things, responding to people's comments and all that. So, sir, I'm, I'm glad you're doing well, and I wish you the best. And how you, how you handle things going forward, when your wife and your kids, uh, it all boils down to you. But this backs up your final thing here, backs up what I say about leverage. When a woman knows a guy can walk like that. It's amazing the change in her behavior. She knew darn well while you were raising children in the prime years of your marriage and the kids growing up that the, the, the deck was stacked against you. You divorced, she was going to get everything and the kids and the house and the alimony and the child support and all that stuff. So she knew that she had the power and look what happened when she had the power. Look at your relationship. And then when the kids were out of the house and you reached a point you didn't give a shit anymore and all that, all of a sudden she's on her best behavior and you're getting the best BJs ever. So I think it's time you make up for lost time that you obviously run the show now. So, and I do wish you the best with your kids and your son and all that. So I appreciate you writing in your story. Lots of lessons. You know, the lessons aren't in this story. The lessons are in the other one that all guys should really hear out. And I, I wish you the best. And uh, keep you posted how things are down the road. And uh, Happy New Year. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.